Brian, I feel like ever since your last fight, you've been kind of itching to get back in there pretty quickly. You know, you even volunteered to fight Ian Gary on short notice. Like, now that you are fighting Gunnar Nelson, it wasn't obviously, you weren't the original opponent, but are you happy with Gunnar as a name and coming all the way to London to fight here? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I'm pumped about the name. You know, after the the last fight and everything, yeah, I was, you know, bitter about it, bitter about my performance. And, uh, you know, I went right back to work. And I think this fight kind of lines up perfectly for what I want to display and what I want to show. Um, Gunner's a legend himself, especially in Europe and, and all, all over here. So, uh, you know, another, bring in another legend, legend versus legend fight. Um, so that's exciting. And honestly, I think as for the fan base and everything, I think this is a, a bigger fight than the original one. So when they, when they gave you Gunner, did you have to bring in anyone specifically to train with? Because he does kind of have a very unique style of fighting in there. Um, you know, only I got my, my training partner. He's right here in the back, Paul Carson, up and cutting stud. Uh, you know, he gave me everything I needed to see, and uh, we're ready. Is this your first time in London? It is. It is. How have they uh, embraced the – because they don't see a lot of people wearing overalls, no shirts here in this weather. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the no shirt, obviously, you know, is, is cold out. Uh, so I went ahead and layered up. I went to the mall, walked around the mall a little bit, and I was definitely, you know, had a shirt on, sweater underneath. But the overalls were still there. You know, I got a couple looks. So I don't know how often people walk around in overalls, but – those uh you paint your fingernails too yes my daughter paints them uh for every fight um it's my it's my war paint and she did uh a theme for uh saint patrick's day going back to gunner uh, he was in here earlier and he said you know after his last fight he had like maybe some nose surgery and uh, a couple things fixed up so what kind of gunner are you expecting in there given that he has we haven't seen him in a year yeah you know uh, i'm familiar with layoffs as well um you know so i expect him to be the best version of himself. You know, I expect the best gunner. I think he's going to come out firing. I think he's going to come out ready to, you know, extend his win streak and, you know, make a run for the top again. You know, like I said, he's a legend. Um, and I think he's still held high in the, the fighting community, in the world, and uh, in the rankings. So, um, you know, it's a big deal. It's a big fight. And like I said, I'm ready to go. I feel like... With your fights, especially, like, similar to Justin Gaethje, it's like when you get a fight, it's like, oh, short list, fight of the night. Is fight of the night an, ins an insult? Because you know, I, I would assume you don't want close fights. You would want, like, clean, clean performances. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're uh, always after clean performances, but I'm not scared or shy of a, of, of a muddy fight, a dirty fight. You know, I'm, uh, I strive in those areas. You know, I, I shine in those areas. So that's fine. I'm okay with it. I'm excited about it. But, yeah, we're... Like, I'm still going after that performance of the night. I don't think I've ever had one yet, so we're still going for it. You didn't get one against Robbie. No, I got the fight of the night for that. <laughs> I, was, I thought for sure I was getting performance, uh, but it, it just so happened it was the best fight on the card as well, too. Last one for me. Uh, what are your thoughts on the main event between Leon and Camaro? How do you see that playing out? Yeah, I'm going to get some beef about this. Uh, you know, I, I think Leon's improved a lot. I think he's done great things, and he's a great fighter. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Usman, you know, getting the win. Um, sorry, everybody. But, you know, it's just uh, my opinion. But uh, I think it's going to be a lot different fight, uh, a more challenged fight, um, you know, moving forward. So I think it's going to be a good fight, exciting fight. Brian. Yeah. Um, just spinning it back to a couple of your prior fights, the, the Matt Brown fight, the Robbie Lawler fight in particular. I know huge amount of respect for both of those guys. And I know heading into the Lawler fight, that was a really big fight for you personally. To get the wins and the manner in which you got them, how much did those two victories in particular mean to you? Yeah, you know, uh, just they meant a lot. You know, those are, those are guys I've, I've watched. They're legends in the sport, you know. And to, to go in there and, and fight them how I did is, you know, how they fight people. You know, I feel like I went in there and I went toe-to-toe -to -toe doing what they do to people, you know, put them for their best and everything. Like in the clinch with Matt Brown, yeah, maybe he may have tripped me and took me on my feet a couple times. We expected that possibly, you know, but I think in there we exchanged elbows. Uh, I got the better of the elbow work, which he's really known for, um, and put it on him. I think Robbie Lawler, not, no one really goes in there and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robbie Lawler, throwing exchange hand for hand, you know, taking shot for shot. Um, so it was awesome to do that. To get the finish against, against him was huge too, um, even bigger. Uh, they both were big moments. And, uh, you know, I look to go out there and put on another big moment against Gunner. I really want to bring out that Viking heritage of his, you know. So 
let's bring that out. I know he's going to be looking to grapple. He'll be looking to strike too, but I know he'll be looking to grapple heavy. We're ready for it all. I was about to say the, the comment you made there about those two fights, the Brown fight, the Lawler fight. It was a fight where you took them on in their wheelhouse, so to speak. Gunner fights very, very differently to those two guys. So how do you have to sort of temper your, your approach to make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble and that you can still be effective? Yeah, you know, uh, I made a mistake in my last fight um, going into that fight, thinking more so that it was going to be another Matt Brown, Robbie Lawler fight. You know, I have grown a lot. I mean, I know it wasn't that long, long ago, but I've grown a lot from that fight. I learned so much. Um, was a little irritated about how it went, obviously, because I thought it was going to be, you know, that kind of fight. Um, but it's shame on me, you know, and it won't, you know, it won't happen again. And uh, I'm all fully prepared to, to take him out in any wheelhouse. And Bryce Mitchell was very successful in getting the UFC, so eventually getting some camo shorts. What chance are you getting some denim, denim print shorts? One Yo, day? give me the, like, cut-off jeans. Like, come on, the short. Yeah, let's get it. The denim, denim cut-off looking. You know, let's do that. Let's go. Uh, Venom, come on, UFC. Let's make it happen. Venom, denim. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Would you want actual denim or just the print? I mean, actual denim would be pretty awesome, I would, if I do say so myself. Yeah, j be a little tight, you know, whatever. Like, tight or not, probably much flexibility. But how short? How high are we going? How high do we want it? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what they want. Uh, bro, I'm back here in the middle. Uh, you've recently made the full-time move to North Carolina to be close to the, the gym that you're trying at, Jimmo. Why did you decide to make that move now as opposed to somewhere later down the line? Uh, you know, it's been, you know, we've been talking about it a while, you know, and uh, sick of traveling, you know. Uh, it's hard. The hardest part about fight camp and everything is being away from my family. You know, that's the most important to me. And uh, it's hard. It puts a, a lot of wear and, and on me and emotionally and physically. And, you know, I'm better when they're around. So, um you know, I obviously went through uh, almost dying, you know, not making it, um, not being able to be here today. And, you know, thank God, you know, I'm I'm blessed. And, you know, he wanted to keep me here and I'm able to con still even to continue fighting. They said I you know, probably wouldn't be able to. Um, so it's truly a blessing. And I'm, you know, so grateful. And with that, too, it was just another reason to even get them, you know, closer is why I spend, you know, four hours away you know, on driving and stuff like that, just not to be able to be with them, you know. I think from having them there with me now and in camp and everything and being able to see them every day in the morning and then go to train and come home and be home at night with them, um, I am the best version of myself. I think you see it in the training room. I think my training partners see it. My coaches see it. Um, you know, you're just getting me at another high le at a higher level. Welcome to London. Thank you very much. Uh, Brian, uh, you used to train at the MMA lab with uh, John Crouch, and John Crouch uh, coached uh, Rick Story, who beat Gunnar in 2014. Did you get any, any points from him? Uh, no, leading up to the fight. Like, I didn't, we haven't talked, I haven't talked to him about the fight or anything like that, but uh, the loophole in that story is I was in the corner and we there a fight week <laughs> when he fought Gunnar. Uh, you uh, previously faced good wrestlers like uh, Dos Anjos, obviously, and, and Colby Conton. How would you, uh, from fights you've seen on Gunnar, what do you think about his wrestling compared to uh, Colby and, and Dos Anjos? I think his wrestling is a lot more, you know, uh, grappler heavy, you know, jujitsu kind of style wrestling, not traditional wrestling. Um, but I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of wrestling this camp. Been doing a lot, like improving. A lot of my wrestling uh, really showing, you know, great strides, really. And, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, doing all the wrestling, it's, you know, it's hard. So I'm, you know, doing my other job as well because I really love it. Um, so just getting a lot of wrestling, but, you know, hopefully, you know, with doing my other job on the side as well, it's, you know, I look to bring that into to play as well. Uh, Brian, hi. Uh, 
you you are te- I hope you don't mind me saying you're technically the the betting underdog in in this fight. Do, do you enjoy that? Do you embrace the idea of kind of proving people wrong and maybe having less pressure on you? Yeah, I'm not worried about pressure. Uh, there's no pressure on me. I'm, I have no fear to go in there. No worry to go in there to to fight him. I'm here to be the best, whether that means that just the best version of myself. You know. I'm here to, to prove to myself, not to anybody. And so, uh, you know, I'm not worried about any of that. Like, there's no extra pressure on it. And being the underdog, awesome. You know, being here in London, pretty much his backyard, awesome. I love that. I love that. And I think I shine best when in those situations. So I absolutely love it. But, yeah, I'm not worried about being underdog or, you know, him, people saying whatever they're saying. It doesn't matter. You're going to see the best version of myself. Brilliant. Thanks very much, mate. Best of luck Saturday. Thank you.